Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8A garden. Today I'm going to be focusing on adding some movement and texture and drought tolerant plants to my garden by utilizing ornamental grasses. garden I'm always focusing on color cut flowers lots of bloom and that is something that is really important to me but what I forget is to add some background texture and movement and by doing things like that it's going to make the things I love such as the flowers really pop and stand out so what I've been doing is I've really been focusing and paying attention to the variety of ornamental grasses that are available at my local nurseries and I've picked out two today that I'm going to be adding to my landscape so three reasons why I'm adding ornamental grasses to my garden number one reason is texture 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 you can't beat a texture like this. I mean, absolutely beautiful, unique, you know, just something kind of wild, interesting, and you know, a really detailed texture, which is gonna look really great with blooms beside it. The second reason I have chosen to add some ornamental grasses is movement, right? These are really gonna catch the wind. They're gonna move around within the garden and create kind of a whimsical quality, which is something I love to have within my garden. And the third reason I've chosen ornamental grasses is they are drought tolerant, which is exactly what I need when you're in a zone like my area of Texas because we are constantly going through let's see we just finished up 60 plus days without any measurable amount of rain and we had a recently we had over 30 days of a hundred degree temps in a row so that's a lot and when your garden starts to fry and literally cook from those temperatures it's really nice to have something like the ornamental grasses that can really kind of thrive and stand in and take the places of blooms that are you know really struggling in that drought Okay, so let's talk about the two varieties I'm going to be adding. The first one is called Hamlin. Boom. And I'm not going to lie, I totally have not watered this as much as it should. So it does have a lot of dried out areas. It still has plenty of green in it. It's doing fine. Yeah, it's no problem. I'm still going to plant it and it'll still be great. Now, this one has some really cool kind of plumage action on the ends, kind of feathery plumes, which I think are absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got a lot of movement in it, and obviously if it wasn't as dried out as it was, this kind of stuff would move a little bit more. But really beautiful plant, and I'm really excited to get it in. This is about its full size, um, fully grown size. It might get a touch bigger if it likes the area it's in, but this should work great. And even though I've got some dried out areas from not watering it very well, I still love them. I'm still going to keep them. They really go with kind of the fall color that I have right now, and then of course this will come back with a lot more green next season. This next variety I have is um, Blue Garma and this particular variety is called Blonde Ambition and this is um, maybe about a third of its full size. It should fill out to about two and a half, two by two, two and a half by two and a half. Really beautiful and has these really delicate little kind of feathery fronds at the top which are wonderful and when this guy catches in the wind, I mean look at it absolutely amazing i cannot wait to get this one into the ground as well okay so when planting this i'm just going to be utilizing a shovel to dig out the area and the areas i'm going to be working i do need to do a little bit of clean out and i'm going to be planting these with plant tone as well so let's get started on all of that Okay, we are in the front yard, and this is my recent project where I did the hookara across the front, and they are looking absolutely gorgeous. And so the area I'm going to be working in is right back in here. I've got a lot of craziness um, of weeds going on back here. I do have a hellebore right there that I'm going to move to a different spot. And I also was aware, I think I have some poison ivy that I need to get rid of as well. When I'm doing that, I use a plastic bag. I double bag the plastic bag and I put my hand in the plastic bag and then use that to remove it and throw it directly into the trash. So I've got a lot of like craziness. I've got a lot of weeds here. This is a, um, a phlox from Proven Winners. And I had another phlox from Proven Winners back here, but it died and did not make it through the drought. So I'm gonna clean up this area, 
move my hellebore to a different area and then make this area is where I'm gonna put the Hamlin grass. So let's go ahead and get that one knocked out first and see what it looks like. I love it. Look at how it breaks up. I used to have like green, 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 right? Look how that breaks it up. Now I understand it's going to be green, but it is going to have some of the little bit of the dried look as well. Let me get closer so you guys can see. It has a lot of green still in it. Like I said, I just didn't water it enough and it dried out, but it's okay. It's planted in. It's a perennial. It will go dormant. It'll do fine. And then over here, okay. So this is a little deceiving what's going on in this area. So this guy's a volunteer. He's not going to be here next year. Okay. Right here is a giant mum. It's a purple color. 
I'm considering moving him, so he's not going to be there this year, next year. And then back here, my maiden hair fern is out of control, and it usually is trimmed back more. So there ten, usually tends to be a lot more space right there. But even so, how glorious is that with just a little bit of that grass peeking up? Right? Like, look how much more interest it adds to the area that usually you would just scan right over, right? Because you just, everything kind of looked the same. So now we have kind of this interesting texture peeking up from among the other greens up here. So I really, really love it. I think both of these are going to just be absolutely gorgeous staples in the front yard. Look how good the front yard is looking, y'all. I am just over the moon with it. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, super excited with the grasses. I did want to show you, I ended up moving the hellebore over here. Ended up just tucking it right in there. The variety is Merlin. Right there, so I'll put that tag in. And it definitely has um, new growth on here. I had trimmed this back and see the new growth coming up. So I've got that peak out there, which this plant got pretty large last year. It should fill in this corner really, which really nicely, which will be great because early spring, I'll get to actually see it there. Where I had it before, tucked back there on the other side of the grass, you couldn't really see it. it. It wasn't a good place for it. There's actually another hellebore tucked back there that when I get the time, I'll move it as well out so that you can actually see it. I have lots of hellebores tucked in different places because truthfully, in early spring, all of this maiden hair fern is dyed all the way back. So there's actually a big, large area that's open back there. So the hellebore is tucked in there. And then I've got hellebore tucked all two or three back here underneath this mum, which works really good because when this mum's not growing, the hellebore is growing. So it works really nicely. Yeah, absolutely loving it. Woo. Okay. So I'm really excited. I'm very encouraged by the unique textures that these are gonna to add to the garden. It's a little bit hard for me to get a really good understanding of what they're gonna look like at this moment. I feel terrible that I let that Hamlin dry, grass get so dry. Um, it's still alive though, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. I just wish it was a little more green right now so I had a better understanding of what it's gonna look like next year, but it is what it is. But I'm really excited about the unique textures that these are gonna be adding to my gardens. Adding the ornamental grasses is outside the box for me. It's not something I typically done. And so I really am going to be studying and looking at some other ornamental grasses that I would like to add to the garden this next year. So what I'm going to do is right now I'm going to put up a series of photos with the names of the different grasses I'm considering right now. If you're interested, you can look them up too. Or if you've grown them, let me know. Let me know what you think about them, especially if you're in a zone similar to mine. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.